it's just that that impact being able to help someone achieve what they've always dreamed of doing in a year we had over 2,000 people apply for gutter launch i would say the biggest obstacle is pride two years five years ten years into business and they don't recognize what they don't know. The only reason you think you can't do it is because you think you can't do it. That's who we want. That's what we're after, are people who are selfless. What's up, everyone? Welcome back to Boo Bummy Podcast. Joining us today is Cowboy Colin. He's all about helping home service businesses get unstuck and winning bigly. He talks to us about home service giants, gutter launch, and leadership. And now, let's get into the episode. All right, welcome back to Built by Me podcast. Joining us today, we have uh, Cowboy Colin. <laughs> We're gonna let him introduce himself a little bit more. Why don't, you, why don't you give us a quick intro? Yeah, well, my name's Colin Dehan. I, I hail from Northern Michigan. I live in a real small town, Ludington. And um, if you've never been to Ludington, Michigan, definitely come check it out. Shameless plug, but awesome little vacation town, one of the best beaches in the country. So, right. um, yeah, started my entrepreneur journey eight years ago. Uh, married with uh, two kids. Uh, one turns nine here in a couple of days and the nice. other one is six. So um, they are the, the pride and joys of my life. And, you know, every, everything we do is, is, is for that. So um, I love my family. I love Jesus. I love guns. And uh, that's, that's my life. So, yeah. I love it. So tell us a little bit about your business. Yeah. Or businesses. I, yeah, I've got a handful of them. So uh, my very first business was my seamless gutter business. And I added everything. I did what every good entrepreneur does, or maybe it's actually actually what every bad on, entrepreneur does. But I added garage doors, and I added siding, and I added windows, and I added doors and roofing. And now that business is just roofing and gutters. Um, I finally yeah. like figured out, oh, you know what? This is really hard to scale when you do everything. And trying to teach one employee to do garage doors and gutters and siding, like, it's impossible right. to do, right? Mm -hmm. So... So that's one of my businesses. That one is uh, fully fully automated now, runs 100% without me. Uh, I, I go there for about an hour every week and meet with my lead team and rock and roll on that. Mm -hmm. um, and then I have a barn building business, so okay. directing pole barns. Um, so in that one, I'm more of a silent partner in. Um, I help out a little bit, but um, I'm just a, I'm a mentor, really, in that business. and. Uh, structure that with a cool buy down so the more he does the less i own of the business right uh, and uh yeah, yeah. so did that and then have an excavation business as well and then last year we launched a new location for our roofing and gutter business down in north carolina so those are my home service businesses and then my, my pride and joy what i spend all my time on right now is our, our home service giants brand um many people have heard of gutter launch that's one of our our premier programs yeah. inside of home service giants and that's uh that's that's where we help people actually grow and scale their business to look like mine yeah. um and not have to work in their business every day right they, they instead just get to work on it and yeah. uh attain that freedom that every entrepreneur wanted when they first started their business right 100 mm -hmm. so you 100%. said that's your that's your favorite right now is that, is that because of the mentorship that you get to do there yeah. or what was yeah, the... Yeah, it's, it's the impact. Yeah, yeah, I would say it's just that, that impact, being able to help someone achieve what they've always dreamed of doing. Not, I mean, it's, we don't have a 100% success rate, right? Just like you guys with, with, with Nice Job, right? Yeah. Um, you know, not every person comes in and utilizes everything in Nice Job and gets the results that they could, right? Um, we run into that same thing, but those who do come in, we know they can absolutely crush, right? Yeah. And watching them just watch their life unfold and them be able to then help their team, right? I believe in that ripple effect of leadership. If I can develop Mo into yeah. a great business leader in it with his gutter business, um, now he gets to be a great leader for his team. Mm -hmm. And they get to be great leaders in their home and in their church and in their community or whatever. And I believe that the ripple effect will, will save this world. So. so what drove you to get home service giants started? Yeah. Like what inspired you? You know, it actually selfishly came from I wanted to launch more locations. And more I locations. needed a way to, to get my team spun up faster in these new locations. Mm -hmm. And so we developed like, yeah, what, what gutter launch is. And we developed that, spent a year and a half building that out, learning management system. I mean, it spent almost a quarter million dollars building this thing, right? And 
it's really in depth and it, what it sucked when it first came out right a quarter million dollars later and i was like gosh <laughs> all right and so now we're a year into you know actually selling it to customers and we've learned a lot and i think now we've really kind of figured that out but um, I wanted to be able to scale my business faster. And so that's what it was for. And I had a, I bought, I hired a mentor for 40 grand a year and um, he had done this. And mm. so I showed it to him. He's like, Colin, you need to sell this to people. Like, let me introduce you to people. And so I got introduced to uh, one of the guys who helped Jimmy John's launch a franchise, like a big franchisee. And I was like, I don't want a franchise, man. Like, I don't want to take from people the rest of their life. That ain't what right. this is about. He's like, well, you could sell it as a, as a program. He goes, but Colin, what you have here, this was what I said sucks. He said is like 10 <laughs> times better than what Jimmy John's first launched as. And I was like, no kidding. So that, that really like got my brain turning. And so then I started looking into that. And what does that look like? I, I got burned out on coaching. I'd done coaching before in a couple yeah. in a program and I got burned out on that. And I was like, I don't, I don't want to do coaching at all. Yeah. So the program thing was really cool. So then we started selling selling Gutter Launch, and what, in a year we had over two thousand people apply for Gutter Launch. Oh wow! And almost everybody needed sales and marketing. Like that was what they wanted: sales and marketing help. And that's what birthed really the Home Service Giants brand. Mm. Um, and that's like our our mid level package where we just help people with everything sales and marketing. We've got what we call our proprietary three first system where we give our reps just one lead a day and they turn it into two or three every single day. Mm. Um, and then, you know, we also help them triple their bottom line in most instances. Right. And right. So most people are, are competing on price when they don't need to be right. And so yeah. we've got a, we call it our value stack sales process and uh, we teach them how to do that and re radically changes their businesses. What would you say is the biggest difference between coaching and a program? What I thought it was, mm -hmm. was I didn't have to do anything. Mm -hmm. Right. And mm -hmm. I sell them a program and the program does everything for them. Mm -hmm. um, coaching, you are the person holding them accountable and you are a little bit more responsible for their success, mm -hmm. I think, with uh, with coaching. And I just got, I don't know, I, f I felt like they depended on you to, you know, wipe, the, wipe their butt for them. You know, like as, when you hire a coach, it's like okay, here's food, and then you got to tell them, okay, it's, it's okay to eat this, all right? Take a bite of the steak. Now take a bite of the potatoes, right? Yeah. And I felt like that, that's how I felt when I was coaching, and I didn't want that. So I wanted to build out what I thought was all, like it lays it out for them. So the program will coach them rather than me having to do that. And while it does that, accountability is a really big thing. Mm -hmm. And if they're not held accountable, they're not going to do it, right? right? And it's just like you guys with a nice job. Um, if, if you're not holding your customers accountable to getting you the data or putting it into nice job or whatever, yeah. you can't do what you do, right? Um, so what we discovered then was I needed accountability groups inside of our program. So mm -hmm. it's not me, but I have accountability coaches, right? Okay, inside yeah. of our program, we call them facilitators. And they help our members get the most out of the program. I so, see. Yeah. I want to talk about leadership, though. Like, I want to talk about, like, what makes a good leader. Yeah. Right? And then, and then how, do you, how do you know that you, when you're talking to somebody with you, through, through your programs, right. that this person's a good leader yeah. or this person's not going to make it through it's the a, program? That's a big point. Or, yeah. uh, that's, that's a really, really important piece of the puzzle because we, I, got, I'm, I, can, I can sell pretty well. And so that first year of Gutter Launch, I sold people into Gutter Launch. I, I sold them a dream that was my dream, that wasn't necessarily their dream. And yeah. so I'd sell them in, and they'd get completely content with doing 30 grand a month in gutter installs and being like, I made 10, 15 K this month. Like, I've never made this type of money before in my life. I'm good. Right? I, don't, I don't need to build a business. Like, mm. I'm okay with just doing it this way. And, you know, we could argue back and forth on that and the importance of having a business. And, like, you're married with kids and your wife doesn't work. And if you fall, I mean, I just talked to a guy who had a ladder slip out. He's been on ladders for 10 yeah. years of his life. Had one slip out, broke his elbow and his other hand. Yeah. Right? And, like, couldn't work. Right? And so it's like you lose everything in that instance. So we could argue that. But if you're content with that, 
you're not, you're not a good fit. So we actually, like I booted 15 people over the last month. And you know, it was done lovingly. I say booted, and that sounds really rough yeah, and yeah, tough. Yeah, yeah. But um, put them down gently. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> right, laid them down gently, and like, hey, we're gonna release you from your contract of paying us and whatever else. But um, we really like honed in on who we want. Um, what I so back to your question on leadership. Yeah. I switch instead of doing sales calls. I do interviews, so they have to come to the table knowing they can ask some questions to me, but they have to really know what what our program is, what it does for them. Like, so we put together like mini programs that mm -hmm. teach them all that stuff, right? Mm -hmm. And like, you could almost look at it as like a webinar, right? Um, so they learn all about it before they get on an interview. And then I actually do the interviews because leadership is so dang important to me that if you don't have the leadership qualities that fit within our community, yeah. like I'm, I'm building the community selfishly for myself of, pe of people that I want to do business with. People yeah. that I want in my circle that I want to have to my house and shoot guns with me, you know, break bread with my family. Like, that's who I want in this community. Um, and if that ain't you, I'm going to, hey, I'm sorry. I don't think you're the right fit for this. And I'll, I have people beg, like, no, 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 I need this. I need this. And I'm yeah. like, I don't, I don't think this is what you need. Are right. you getting, are you getting entrepreneurs, like, at what stage are they coming? You know what I mean? To like the. Yeah. So we have, you. so we have the three different programs. We have gutter launch. We have gutter, gutter kings. And then we have home service giants. So okay. home service giants, we have strict requirements on. They have to do at least 35 grand a month in season, right? So average $35,000 a month during their busy seasons or season. Um, they have to have at least one employee and they have to pass the interview, right? So we have that. Gutter Kings, they have to be doing $55,000 a month and have at least three employees and then be either off the truck or off of sales, right? One or the, one or the other. They have to I see. have one part of their business working without them, right, um, to get into like that. Like working on the business, not in the business. You're right, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. I mean, they could still be working in the business, but they have yeah. to have, like, one section that they're not doing in the business, right? Because um, we know if they're doing, if they're answering the phones and they're doing the sales and they're doing the installs, they don't have time to actually work on the business. Mm. So... They, we want to see that they've already taken measures to work on their business and build a business versus, well, yeah, I can do 55K a month and I bust my butt and I do it, but yeah. um, I'm working 80 hours a week to do so, you know? Um, and then home or, uh, and then gutter launch is for new businesses. So our, our target avatar um, is like mid-level managers, right, who have spent their year spent their years building other businesses mm. and they're like there's got to be more to life i'm tired of working 60 70 so they don't hours actually own their own business they don't yet. own their own business they haven't started yet. no gotta launch we'll walk them through starting the llc all the way up to full-scale automation that's pretty cool it's yeah. really cool so if you're listening and you're thinking about starting a home service business that's don't a great opportunity right because i find like there's a lot of programs that um you have to be at a certain threshold or you have to be doing it for quite some time right. before they even start talking to you. Yeah. yeah. Um, that's it's interesting. A, it, yeah. Having, having those, those tiers is, is pivotal. Yeah. Cause there's also different needs at different stages of like right. your company, right? Like you're going to need one thing when you first start out versus another thing when you've already got it all right. laid out and you might have to unlearn some things too. If you've yeah. already learned something and it's like, ah, I that's probably it. could be doing this a better way. That's it. What do you prefer? Do you prefer someone who's a little bit more green and you can kind of like mold them into it or that's someone a good that question, yeah. you yeah. would so have to like unlearn? We have, we have two, like our, our top two performing avatars, if you will, mm. is the existing gutter business doing like 500 to $800,000 a year in sales, but they have to be of the right mindset. Okay. All right. I've, I've had some that get in and I, I boot them. Right. Like they just they're not willing to unlearn anything. It's my way, no highway. And um, so they have to be of that right mindset. And if they get in and they are of that mindset, like one of our show ponies, his name is Owen. And he bought in and uh, I mean, he paid in full. So he paid in full up front, paid sixty five thousand dollars to be in our program. And he made that money back in just three weeks because oh, wow. he got it. And like I had done a sales call with him eight months prior and the, the pro so the price was only 40 K then. So he was like, can I get it? Can I get it at 40? No, you gotta pay 65. Like you dragged your feet, man, you weren't ready. And, uh, so he got in and just through some simple marketing, pricing structure, sales process. Um, and then he did kind of have like a, a little bit of a, a, a gift 
he had somebody that wanted to launch another location. So I helped him negotiate that deal for him uh, and how he got paid for that. But mm. still, without that, it would have been within like a month and a half he got that 65K in excess of what he was doing. Right. Mm. But so I interviewed him and I was just like, what, what are you doing? Like, how are you utilizing the program? Like, how are you going through it? And he's like, yeah, I listened to it twice on like one and a half, two X speed. I just went through everything, went through all the videos, read everything, um, did that twice. I did that. It took me like a week to go through that. I just wanted to like understand it in its entirety. Mm -hmm. And then I started going through it very slowly and like, okay, I'm on this part. I'm making sure this is implemented. And he's an existing business, but he went back to like starting the LLC and being, making sure he was set up and filing taxes right and all this stuff. Um, Want trademark like all that right. he wanted to make sure he was dotting his i's crossing his t's mm -hmm. to date he's been in six months and he's like i'm like 75 percent of the way through it now like that's mm -hmm. it wow he's like i'm just every week i'm tackling one more thing he goes because yeah. i want i want to and he's so he got in at 700k in revenue the year prior he's pacing for almost two mil right now it's amazing mm -hmm. so um, he's like, it's this, this is life changing, man. I want to help however I can. He's a facilitator in our program now. And, oh, that's really uh, cool. Yeah, just yeah, yeah. crush him. So, I, so that's one of our avatars. And the other one is the, the mid-level manager who understands the power of systems. You know, so you're talking like, you know, the assistant store manager of a Walmart or the store manager of a Walmart or whatever. Somebody who understands the systems and the, the, the importance of them. Yeah. And having them in a business, and they will they take it and they run with it. Um, they don't they don't ever touch the tools. They're like, nope, I know I'm I'm above that. I got to hire people for that. It doesn't make sense for my hourly rate to be installing gutter. Um, so I'm going to hire people for that. Um, I'm going to hire sales reps. They, they they just understand that they're worth more than doing those things. What, what, do you, what do you think is like the biggest obstacle when people come to you and they sign up for the program that you see that they're often running into Yeah, that you're kind of helping them kind of get over? I would say the biggest obstacle is pride. 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 Um, they get stuck in having to be the guy or gal. Like that the business, like their business is them. And that's like having done prior coaching and inside of gutter launch and home service giants and all that that's the biggest hurdle that people have to overcome mm -hmm. is death to themselves in their business because they that is that is their identity yeah. yeah and it's one of the hardest things to let go of you know when you let a sales rep go i mean every single one of my sales reps we keep track of how many times a week they get asked are you the owner of the business mm -hmm. right and it, it it's like five times a week my sales reps get asked that question mm. right and we've got you know we've got eight sales reps running around at our headquarters mm. i gotta no, yeah, you're, you're been okay, doing a ton okay. of talking here <laughs> that's a huge water bottle i don't know if yeah, anyone it's a is, half a if, gallon if you're watching that's so <laughs> <laughs> try and do two of those a day but usually i only get one but that's a lot yeah i try to do two of mine yeah one. Mine compared to yours now yeah, it's, <laughs> yeah two of those is equal to one of them so stay hydrated that's right <laughs> but uh yeah dying to themselves and just understanding how little they actually know mm. right and that's that that's like the big part of the pride is a lot of people get a year two years five years ten years into business and they don't recognize what they don't know yeah and I was no different when I started my business. Actually, Josh Latimer is a, one of my best friends, and he wasn't. His boy was in my youth group. I was a I was a youth pastor, and his boy was in my youth group. I had no idea that his boy was the son of Josh Latimer. And one of my friends sent me one of Josh's podcasts, and I just started binging it. And I was like, his boy wore a sweatshirt with the last name Latimer on it. And I was like, hey, what's your dad's name? He's Josh. And I was like. Are you kidding me? And so anyways, Josh ended up being one of my coaches. And one of the biggest like aha moments I had in my, I mean, he's been kind of a mentor to me now for six yeah. years or whatever. But uh, one of the biggest mentors I had, this was three years in, or one of the biggest aha moments. He's like, Colin, the biggest shift that you've had. And I say this, this is a direct quote. This is not me boasting. 
Um, he said, the reason I know you're going to be a billionaire, Colin, is because you have recognized how little that you know, and you have fully humbled yourself, and you don't know. You, you recognize you don't know anything about, about business anymore. Mm. And I was like, okay. Right. I'm not afraid to be the dumbest person in the room, and I make a lot of stupid decisions, <laughs> and I'm, I try a lot of stupid stuff. Um, that's a benefit that I sell to my community all the time is, hey, you guys get to avoid all the mistakes I make because I'm just really dumb. And, uh, yeah, yeah, but yeah, yeah. That, was, that, that has stuck with me forever. And I, so I, every time I get in a situation, it's always like, what can I, what can I learn from this? Whether, whether it's a coaching situation, I can learn. I learn from my clients all the time. Mm -hmm. I'm always learning from them. Mm -hmm. So that's it. Uh, biggest, biggest obstacle is pride. Interesting. That's so interesting. I want to ask about trends that you've seen because you've seen people come in. Have you seen any like the certain type of people that are coming in? The generational shift. Like, has it been yeah. a lot more younger people coming in? What what kind of trends have you seen now with your program? I haven't seen any like. I mean, there's still a lot of young entrepreneurs. Don't get me wrong. Yeah. But honestly, majority of our clients are mid to late 30s up to in their fifties mm -hmm. and uh, that, yeah, I don't have a ton of really young people. And I think that kind of goes back to that pride mm. of they don't know what they don't know mm. yet. Yeah. Um, there's a lot, I mean, my, my business partner, Daniel and I were just talking about this the other night on the rooftop of our Airbnb and um, you know, what's, what's the biggest hurdle that we've experienced for people not buying our product? Right. If they come in, they're interested and they don't buy. What is it? What is it, the reasoning? Yeah. And it's because they can't wrap their brain around this working in their area because that's all they know. They've mm. been stuck in this little bubble doing business by themselves, talking to their mom and dad who've never owned a business and think that this is the only way to run a business. Right. They, they're not educated with what is actually happening in business around the world just in their own little bubble here. And that sucks, right? When you get someone on the phone and you see like, holy crap, dude, you're doing $800,000 a year without a CRM. You don't even have a website. Like, it, like can you fathom <laughs> <What>? that? <laughs> That's actually crazy. And you're like, you are just hustling. And yeah. And wait, $800,000 a year and you're the cheapest guy in the area? Mm. Yeah. It's like, Holy crap. Imagine if you actually marketed your business. Right. Imagine yeah. if you, instead of selling gutter for six bucks a foot, you were selling it for $12 a foot. Mm -hmm. Like just that one thing. You know, I could never do that in my area. You know, people are too poor. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. How poor are they? And, yeah. and how big is your area? Uh, my area is really remote and no, it's a farming community. Nobody makes money. Oh, what's the average income? Like 50 grand. Well, you know what? My county, the average income is $38,000, and we do it every single day. Yeah. You're like, oh, you know, my county, we have 30,000 people in it. I have to serve four counties to hit 100,000 people. You live in a city with 180,000 people. Right? The only reason you think you can't do it is because you think you can't do it. Right? Yeah. It's all between the ears. And getting them to actually understand that, it you can't do it in a one hour call. That's a, that's a year long journey. Mm -hmm. Right. And so, yeah. so for someone who wants to like start a business today, right? Like they say, Hey, they call you up. They say, I haven't started anything yet. I don't have any tools. I don't have any equipment, nothing. Yeah. And I want to get into like, I want to start a, like a home service business. Yeah. What do you say to them? What does that process look like? You know yeah. what I mean? Like how we do just you had start? that happen at our booth. At our, we had, oh, we had really? a gutter launch booth here. And this guy comes walk up. He goes, I saw you here last year. I've not stopped thinking about you guys for a year. I haven't done anything. And uh, if I want to start a business tomorrow, what does that look like? Yeah. He's like, like with us or by yourself? He's like, with you. If I, if, I, if I want to buy gutter launch and start a business tomorrow, what does that look like? And I walked him down the journey. And it's like, you know, you're three to four weeks of setup stuff. You know, getting, getting your LLC, getting your bank accounts, getting insurance, getting your website built, like, all that normal setup stuff. Um, so you're going to do that for three or four weeks. In that time, you can start marketing your business. Yeah. I wouldn't go and collect any monies yet, uh, but start marketing your business. Start creating brand awareness. You know, you got to get your logo made in that first three weeks too. Um, 
But then after that three or four weeks, it's it's go time. Like let's start generating some income here, mm -hmm. and let's start doing all of our free marketing levers. We got twelve free marketing levers that we go through in there, um, because some people get in and they're like, I, I don't want to spend eighty grand on marketing to get. Are you are started. you even helping them like choose the service that they offer? Well, we only help them like the the only people that we help start businesses with is inside of Gutter Launch. So it's it's a seamless gutter business only. It's That's a gutter it. business. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 Yep. That's it for now. And That's what about what about if they're living in a city, for example, that has ten gutter gutter businesses? Oh man, the more the merrier. The more the merrier. Yeah, like if there's yeah. if there's ten, that means there's there's a demand, right? Yeah. Um and I don't I don't believe in like we don't sell territories either. I just like actually I haven't sold it yet. Um Monday when I get back, he's coming, he's buying one of my one of my trucks, one of my gutter machines, and he's buying gutter launch. Um, he lives 25 miles south of me. I don't believe in the scarcity mindset of yeah. other people. Because well, a lot, area. a lot of people will think like, oh, my, my city's too like you know, there's so many businesses that are already doing this. Yeah. How yeah. am I going to be able to get into this market? It's right. it's mm -hmm. fully saturated. Yeah. You know what I mean? I I can't I can't break into this. I'm not going to be right. able to make money. Yeah. That whole that whole saturated conversation is just what people say when they suck at business. That's yeah. my that's my hot take. There mm -hmm. we go. You can turn that into a short, but. Um, <laughs> But that's what they say when they suck at business. Josh Latimer and I have done a ton of different deep dives on this. Mm -hmm. You know, the absolute largest of the largest home service businesses, max have 10% of the market share in their market, mm -hmm. right? But most good. of like the biggest companies in a trade only have 8%. Like, so think of the biggest roofing company, the biggest HVAC company in your, in your respective hometowns. Yeah. They have about 8% of the market share. So... While they might be doing $40 million a year in HVAC, HVAC or whatever, there's 40 other HVAC companies in your town yeah, awesome. yeah. that are doing $1 to $2 million a year, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, yeah, And yeah, yeah. that 40 mil is only, well, that, that wouldn't be, that's not good math on my part, but <laughs> you get what I'm saying, yeah. right? Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah there's yeah. so much opportunity out there. Actually, in my, in my city, in my, in my home city, I, I live in, uh, in London, Ontario. Okay. There was two. Uh, there I've was been two, there. Yeah, there's two, really. Yeah. Why? <laughs> um, I was driving to Niagara. Okay. And so I went we were in Michigan. That's true. Yeah. I've been to yep. Michigan as well. Yeah, and yeah. we did Toronto too. Yeah. So. yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Well, anyways, there was, there was an HVAC company where there was two brothers and they ended up splitting up. Okay. And I, at first I was like, how? Because that their, their company was like a, so a brother's thing. Yeah. I don't know what happened. I don't know a backstory, but they ended up splitting up. And then I was like, how is this other brother going to like actually grow? They, they were like a, one of the biggest like HVAC Right. businesses and now you see the other brothers like trucks everywhere and they're both yeah going right so i think it's a good point mm -hmm. i think it's just something that people have to think about is that if you're planning to get into the home service space don't feel discouraged yeah that's right. if there's a 10 other businesses in your area doing yeah. what you want to do that's right there's they create business. awareness yeah mm -hmm. like that's it you competition's know, a good thing it just yeah. means that the market's big that's right yeah you know there's uh in the gutter space there's a big company called leaf filter and the gutter installers all hate leaf filter because they sell at ridiculously high prices. Mm -hmm. And uh, so they think they're ripping people off. Yeah. Well, what they do when they come in into your area, they create so much like demand for gutters that they're giving you leads, right? And they, their target is like 25 or 30% closing rate. Mm -hmm. So out of 10 leads, there's they're seven people who now understand that they need gutters because they sat through a full demo and learned about how it's going to destroy their house and all this other stuff, and they need it, Yeah. that are going to call the next company in line. And that can be you if you do it right. right? And then you get to come in. If Leaf Filter just quoted $14,000 for this gutter system, and your normal price is two grand, and so you show up and sell it for two grand, well, how much money did you just leave on the table? Right? Yes. Uh, you don't need to be 14, but two grand? Uh, yeah, you're mm -hmm. definitely the cheap guy at that, right? Yeah. So it creates a lot of awareness and it just creates the demand. So for me, we have some of our like fastest growing companies inside of our program are companies where we have two or three in the same area because they're all marketing for each other mm -hmm. and they oh, close 50 to 70 percent. Well, that means three to five of their leads are then going to go to the other Guy, Interesting, right? And so, so they like different names. At it that way. Yeah, they're all different. They're all different companies. Different companies, but they're uh, all members of our community, right, and right, they right, love right. it because they're yeah. like, "Holy cow, we show up, 
And this customer is conditioned that this is the price that we yeah. should do. That's right? cool. I so. like the, that, that way of thinking, though, because it's not necessarily like it, it is co competition, but it's yeah. like healthy competition. Like right. you're, you're kind of making each other better because it's like well, you're right. Like it's, people are more primed to spend because you already sure. did. You know, I'm not coming in at step one. I'm coming in maybe at step two and three. Exactly. And I really like what you said about like closing rate. If their closing rate is 50 percent, there's still some there's still money left on the table. That's right. That you can now come and there's still enough for everybody. I feel like a lot of people are like, I don't want to do it because this person does it or this person does it. How many brands of toilet paper are there? Oh my goodness. Like, yeah. so right. many, like, it's still an essential. That's right. <laughs> still, people still need it. That's right. How so, many different Cheerios can there be? I you know? Like, <laughs> like, you know? It's, it's like, they don't think so like that, so why are right. you? <laughs> That's it. That's it. How can you differentiate? Just yeah. a little bit. I want, I want to wrap, but I want to ask about leadership again, right? Yeah. Like, what, did you, what would you say is like the one main characteristic that you look for in a good that leader? I look. When someone, especially yeah. when it comes to like starting a home service business, right? The best characteristic that I can look for is selflessness. Mm. Um, caring about, like if people come in and they just want to make a bunch of money so they can do whatever, like that's going to happen with owning a business if you do it right, you know? Yeah. Um, that's like a given. And if that's your why, that's, that's not who we want, right? But the ones who come in, and my favorite, my favorite customers who win the biggest, right? And if they follow me at all, I say win bigly all the time. We win bigly so that we can give bigly. And that's like one of our big catchphrases inside of our communities. And the people who win the biggest give the biggest to their family, to their employees, to their community. And the ones who come in with that mindset already of, you know what? I'm just tired of working 60 hours a week. My kids are six and eight years old right now, and I've missed so many games and dance recitals and parent-teacher conferences and whatever yeah. else. Like, my kids don't know me, and I need to do this not just for my kids but for my marriage yeah. because mm -hmm. while we're not on the brink of divorce, we're definitely not the couple that everybody's striving to be, mm -hmm. and I want that for my marriage. I don't want to just get by in life. I want the best. And... Mm -hmm. Um, so they're doing it for other people. And right. um, so a mix of that or, you know, I just want to provide opportunity for people. That guy that came up yesterday, he's like, yeah, I want to open a business in my hometown. He goes, I've got, I've got a really good job. I'm not going to leave this guy hanging. He gave me a really good opportunity. And I just want to pass that blessing on to other people. So mm. I want to open a business and give other people opportunities like I got. And it's like, that's who we want. Yeah. That's what we're after are people who that. are selfless. So. Oh, I love that. Yeah. Oh, this was great. Thank you so much. So many great nuggets in this episode. We always ask everyone, where can they find you? Yeah. All the social medias. I think my handles are underscore Cowboy Colin or just Cowboy Colin. Um, yeah, any other social medias, YouTube, Instagram, TikTok, Facebook. I have an actual personal account on Facebook. You can add me there. Um, or you can go gutterlaunch.com or homeservicegiants.com. Nice. Awesome. Amazing. Yeah. Thank you so much, Colin. Thank this you, bro. So this is great. It was yeah. awesome. Thank you. Thanks. That wraps up this week's episode of the Built By Me podcast. As always, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to our channel and follow us on Instagram at Built By Me Podcast. Till next time. Keep building. <laughs>